Hey everyone, thank you so much for visiting Econfinity and this video is going to be about real GDP versus nominal GDP. Uh, this is a series of macroeconomics videos. I will be trying to clarify those technical boring definitions in the most simplified way. So please do subscribe if you want to know more about this and also check out our website econfinity.in to know more about what we do. Um, so let's get started. So we all know GDP is the total value of goods and services that's produced in an economy in a particular period of time. But we always prefer real GDP over nominal GDP. The fundamental difference is that real GDP accounts for the general price level changes. Something that you bought in 2000, same thing might not cost the same right now. Uh, for example, our dairy milk slate chocolate. The price of dairy milk slate chocolate 15 years before is very different from what it is right now, even the same chocolate. So this sort of changes in price level of in an economy is accounted in real GDP, but that is not accounted in nominal GDP. So this is one of the main reasons why we all prefer looking at real GDP and not nominal GDP. Also, before we get into our illustration, we need to understand two main reasons why a country's or an economy's GDP might increase. The first reason, the production actually increased. So in an economy from 2000 to 2020, probably the production actually increased and that means the GDP also increased. The total value of the products and services also increased. That might be one reason. The second reason is the price level. So probably the production is the same. You know, the economy is probably producing the same thing that it was producing in 2000, but the price level has increased, which means when we calculate the GDP, the GDP might look a lot, but probably in terms of production, the economy is still producing the same thing. So that would be uh, the second reason why a country can have higher GDP. But this is nominal GDP, right? So now we'll get into our illustration to understand the, the hypothetical example of how real GDP and nominal GDP is different. Let us assume in our hypothetical economy, there are three different products. One is food, second is clothing, and third is housing services. Um, so let's assume the price of food is 20, the clothing is 40, and the housing is 80. And this is for the year 2000 and 2001. The total production of food is 100, for clothing it is 200 and for housing it is 150. So when we calculate our GDP for the year 2000-2001, uh, we arrive at a figure of 22,000. Now let us look at 2020. The food, the price of food is 50, the price of clothing is 80 and the price of housing is 100. The price has clearly increased in the past 20 years. But let us assume the production still remains the same, which is at 100, 200 and 150. Now, if we estimate our GDP, the total GDP would come around 36,000. So technically, with absolutely no increase in production, uh, just because the price levels were price levels increased in the year 2020, we arrive at a different figure and it looks much overestimated, although the production is still the same. Uh, so to avoid this kind of a uh, miscalculation or overestimation, uh, that's why we use real GDP to account for the change in price levels. So how do we do this? We basically uh, take a base year price. So we set a constant year price. For example, 2000 to 2001 price would be uh, calculated even for the year 2020 or for the for throughout every year, a constant base year price uh, would be taken and that price would be calculated to make a very good comparison of over the time of GDP growth rate. So we get a picture of, okay, this is the base year price. So when I calculate our production every year into that base year price, I get a much fairer idea of actual production that has happened instead of, uh, you know, getting a misleading picture with the price level changes. So to avoid that confusion, that's why we use real GDP using the constant base year price. Uh, news fact is that the stats uh, department has recommended uh, 2020 to 21 as the base year for the upcoming GDP calculation. So this is going to be the new base year. Our previous base year was 2011. That was our base year, 2010 and 11. It is not just the GDP, the real GDP. 
we also need to look at how do we ascertain the total economic health of the of our economy right so we use a real gdp per capita so the population plays a very important role here because uh, in the year 2000 the population will be very different from the year 2020 because our population is increasing so sometimes even if the gdp is increasing uh, that does not really mean that your economy is perfectly doing great because what if your population is increasing too to give an illustration, let us assume the real GDP for the year 2000 was 22,000 and the real GDP, note the real GDP which is adjusted with the inflation and general price levels in the year 2020 is 30,000. Also, the population for the year 2000 is 100 and the population is increased to 500 in the year 2020. Now, if we calculate the real GDP per capita, that means the total GDP divided by the population. We arrive at the figures such as 220, that is, that means uh, per person's income is 220 in the year 2000 and per person's income in 2020 is just 60. So even though the production and the GDP has increased from 22,000 to 30,000, we still see that the per capita, that is a per person's income has actually fallen. So to get a better picture about how an economy is actually performing, we consider real GDP per capita, which also accounts for the population growth. So per capita, real GDP is the best way to look at a country's uh, economic performance so that we understand the population and the demographic dimensions too. Uh, so that is all about today. I will catch you with the same series with different sort of concepts. Do stay tuned, do subscribe this channel and also check out the website too. Thank you.